Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is number 23 of my What Makes It Work series, and this is entitled Resistance Spot Welding. Now, spot welders are commonly used in the automotive industry, especially in the body shops where they're making the bodies. There are three or four thousand welds on every car body, so it's just a common way of fastening sheet metal, but also there are other types of resistance welding, and that would be uh, seam welding and that's usually done with a roller and I'm not really going to talk about that but with this type of welder uh, we can weld sheet metal and even wire or small rod together so this video will be in two parts the first just a general discussion on uh, what spot welding is and then if you have more interest watch part two where I'll break it down a little bit more and talk uh, a lot more about this Miller spot welder this little Miller spot welder is over 40 years old and they still make a, a model of this. It, of course it would be uh, with an electronic timer. I'll talk about the timer here in a second. But uh, it'll cost you about 800 bucks or more and that will be without I believe the tongs and the tips and uh, all other accessories that you might need. And I think these are also available with a stand that allows you to use them with your foot. Because really you need two hands to hold your work and position the work. Uh, and the third hand to operate this. So it's for a three-handed man. Or get the, the foot operated model or get your wife down there in the shop to help you. But this is a, a Miller spot welder. Now there are other uh, welders available on the market. Let me show you one. This is the latest Harbor Freight catalog and you can see that they offer two different spot welders here. One uh, at 120 volt and the other at 240 volt for only 170 bucks is a pretty reasonable price for what it is. They do not have a timer on them but I see on YouTube quite a few men are using these and since they carry the Chicago electric label they are obviously made in America. Here's the tag on the Miller spot welder. They call it, not electro, electro spot, electronically timed portable spot welder. Now the timer on this is so old that it has two vacuum tubes in there, which I'll try to show you here in a minute. Model 11, uh, one and a half kVA, and it has a duty cycle of 50%, which means you can use it half the time before it overheats. So it says, uh, all right, be sure to ground unit and all that good stuff here. But uh, Miller makes an extremely rugged machine, and the parts are still available for this. That is the consumables. So uh, this one's been around a long time, and as seldom as I use it, it's going to be around a lot longer. And a spot welder is nothing more than a step-down transformer and a way to time it and a delivery system through the electrodes. This is the control end. And uh, there's just a switch here, on and off, and notice the little light will come on, and I think it's a neon light. That's a long time before LEDs were even thought about, or available. And you can set this for anywhere between uh, 0 and uh, 60. Which the entire principle of a spot welder, or resistance welder, is simply we are converting uh, the voltage to a low voltage, which gives us a higher current. And since these tongs here and tips are copper, there's very little resistance there. But when we put uh, two pieces of steel in there, steel would have very high resistance. So when we do this and then put pressure on it, and at the same time, the handle here is turning the switch on to time the amount of uh, current uh, traveling through there. And the resistance is so great that the uh, steel gets about oh, around 2,000 degrees hot, while you're squeezing it, it fuses, you hold it there for just a, a fraction of a second, and uh, the weld is achieved. So what we're doing here is squeezing, that's pressure on the work, and then when the switch goes on, that's the welding, the current is on, and it produces that little weld nugget that I was just uh, talking about and we hold it momentarily while it's literally forged together and then pressure off 
allow it to cool a little bit before you do much with it and uh, the job is done and we can produce uh, thousands of wells usually produced by a robot in a in an automobile body shop and uh, so it can be highly automated on those big machines the tips are water cooled these get very hot and in the high school I can't tell you how many times kids were burned even though you told told them to be careful on uh, on these tongs and these tongs were available in many different lengths and shapes and so on and I think when you buy this uh, machine it comes without any tongs those are about a hundred dollars a pop and then of course you can buy extra tips which we call the consumables and I'll talk more about those in the second video. You can spot weld almost any kind of a steel, stainless steel, but you must avoid galvanized metal or painted metal or rusty metal and the samples that I have had rust on them and paint on one side. You can still see the hammer tone paint. This was off of a filing cabinet and I have cleaned it with a grinder and again here I'm ready to weld. The machine is uh, is on and I'm going to push the handle down until it and hold it down until the time cycle is complete. Remember the timing on this machine is done here. So here we go. Sometimes I would test a weld just to see how well the, the welder is working and I'm, what I'm trying to do here is twist it. I'm gonna to have to put it in the vise to finish that. Okay, it's in the vise now. Sometimes when you tear these apart, you're going to find that it pulls the metal all the way through one piece. So you have a hollow spot on, uh, on one of the pieces. And uh, then that just shows that you've got a very good, strong weld. Now, you're not going to be able to twist it off like that if you have two or more welds. This is 22 gauge sheet metal. And I'm going to put four wells on here right now, set at about three quarters of a second. Be sure and wear safety glasses when you do this. Sometimes the sparks really fly. But if you put four wells like this on a lap joint, you aren't ever getting it apart unless you drill those uh, wells out. And they do make a special tool for removing spot wells. I think they use it in body shops. Now that would be an extremely strong weld, and this is very hot, so you got to be careful. And these tongs here, oh, 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 creepers, creepers, I wasn't kidding. Remember, these are water-cooled on the heavy-duty machines like in a, in a factory. So that's spot welding, that's how it works. If you notice just a little residue of copper from the tips, because the and I don't know why other than the tips were freshly turned and I'm going to show how to do that in the next video and if you want to learn a lot more about spot welding watch part two of this video but if you're satisfied on the general principles of uh, resistance welding spot welding uh, this video is over and uh, thanks for watching this is Tubal Kane, and I'll see you in the next video